Welcome everybody to Radicalized Truth Survives. I'm Heidi Kuda. I'm with Jim Stewartson and High Fidelity. We are an investigative show about disinformation and we interview experts all over this fabulous world to bring you guys the most critical tools to fight the information war. I mean, that's essentially what we are and what we do. And today is no different. We're bringing our uh, dear friend Alex Alvarova, and she's an author. She's a disinformation expert. She has the highest rated podcast on uh, in the Czech Republic, Canaries in the Net, that focuses on disinformation. We're going to be talking about the soul killers, and she's going to be introducing us to a new word for many that uh, was the practice of how to dismantle the lives and the uh, mental health of activists, dissidents, reporters um, back in East Germany uh, during the Soviet era. And uh, we can introduce the word now if you like, but I'm going to have to have one of you guys say it because every time I try to say it, even though I speak German, it's not an easy word to roll off the tongue. Zersetzung. Yeah. Z-E-R-S-E-T-Z-U-N-G. Zersetzung. It's Literally, amazing. it means decomposition. Yeah, it shows how the methods they use to uh, abuse their targets. And as um, Alex explained to us, the concept was as they were getting funding from the West, it didn't look so good if you defenestrated journalists, uh, Russian style. So instead, they destroyed their lives. This is an act of measures that continues today. I write and have written a lot about uh, being hunted, and Jim um, actually is an expert in this field. I, I am fighting my the jackhammer outside, so I'm, <laughs> meeting, and I'm meeting very quickly. Uh, but yes, uh, it is a, a great conversation uh, about you know an important idea. It's and it's not just this one particular kind of you know era. It, it, it's a it's just a um, it was a very well-rounded concept um, that the East German Stasi used. Um, it's based on KGB tactics. Yeah. Um, but that basic idea of coming at a target from lots of hidden directions and just okay. disorienting and uh, it was crushing them with disappointment was one of the things, right? It was like mm -hmm. everything you try yeah. gets destroyed. Right, right. everything you do, it's messed up, and that is that is something that you know I've been experiencing for 39 months. Yes, and me on and off since 2018, and we have some really great new words to introduce you to. What we're experiencing today are swarms of soul killers, and you're going to hear the moment where Alex says it, and it's amazing because what she's talking about was pre-internet, and now the same tactics practice then have been completely elevated with absolutely no protection for those who are the targets. And what we're going to reveal are some of the secret methods of this type of abusive control. And I found the conversation just uh, life affirming. I was very grateful to have her expertise. And um, I'm oh, still a little bit. Pre yes. Preview, a preview. I just wanted to warn people I may look slightly different in the interview, just <laughs> not be alarmed. There, there, there was a, there was a time thing. That's all. Uh, there was a, there was a, a break in the space and time continuum. Um, so I've had a little break in the space and time continuum because I just finished listening to Jen Tobbs' Booked Up podcast where she interviewed Andrea Chalupa, who is just so amazing. And she told this story about how her uncle had a copy of the Ukrainian edition of Animal Farm, which was created um, in a colony where uh, refugees were forced to live. And uh, it, she just tells this most incredible story, but um, George Orwell corresponded uh, with the person who put the book together in this uh, refugee colony. And um, it's just the most beautiful story. And I'm still like wiping like tears away because she has this most precious edition 
uh, Ukrainian edition, and they even politicize the cover and the art is so beautiful. So I recommend you go to Jen Tobbs Booked Up, hear that interview, and in the uh, you'll be able to see the image I'm referring to. It's just so incredibly dope. And if you haven't seen uh, Chulupa's uh, film, Mr. Jones, please do. It's incredible. And I had no idea that my friend Nelson George was the person who helped her get that film made. I'm going to have to give Nelson a holla myself, you know? Uh, I got some scripts. <laughs> anyway, it's really, really cool. Have you guys seen Mr. Jones? We should have a screening if you haven't. It's, uh, it's an amazing film. It's, yeah, it's mind blowing. Yeah, so so I'm just, so great. I'm just still reeling from the fact that you said dope. <laughs> just going back to my roots, I suppose. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was so dope. It was so we're, dope. We're yeah. very we're very street on the red pot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're all kinds of things. Uh, what we are, uh, I would say, is freaking awesome. My opinion, Jim will disagree, but whatever. Ever. Okay, here we go. So, uh, front loaded. Front loaded. First item, Elon Musk and Tucker Carlson are reputation washing for Douglas Mackey. Why would they do that? Why would they want a reputation wash for Ricky Vaughn, the guy who interfered with the election, is now going to prison for seven months targeting African-American people with uh, voter suppression uh, tactics? Uh, why would they want a reputation wash him? Go ahead and show the next screenshot. I think I sent it to you. It's the one with Tucker Carlson. As we learned from Charles Creel, an attempted murder is still a murder. So, you know, an attempted murder is still an attempted murder. It doesn't matter. That's not the point. Go back to the Tucker Carlson one for a minute. Um, uh, there's so much going on with Elon Musk, but here he is. The First Amendment is done. Douglas Mackey is about to go to prison for mocking Hillary Clinton. That is propaganda. That is dis fucking information, right? That is not what he did. He interfered with the presidential election and he's going to prison for it. So I don't know what Tucker Carlson's hiding, but that is propaganda. And one more comment on the Musk before you guys chime in. Show that Musk one, please. Because you will see him doing excellent propaganda himself as he tries to conflate uh, not only is he doing what everybody did about Cambridge Analytica, which we talked about with Charles Creel, oh, there's no impact. But what prison sentences were given out to those who suppressed Hunter Biden's laptop? What about ism right there? So he's accomplishing multiple things. I think these guys might be a little bit scared because they engaged in much of the same shit. Uh, gentlemen, what say you? Well, they, they want to do it this time right they they want to make it okay jesus right we, we, the, the the big target right now is 2024 we everybody i'm sorry but for all concerned this is existential all they are thinking about is 2024 right. and how do they radicalize their base uh in the meantime and you know try to disrupt um you know the country in the meantime and so they want to make it okay for neo-Nazis, and he is a neo-Nazi. Do not, make no mistake, this guy is a fucking Nazi. Anti-Semitism, racism, everything you could possibly imagine. This guy was partners with Microchip. Uh, he was a part of Maggot 3X, which helped steal the election for Michael T. Flynn. He did not go to prison for mocking Hillary Clinton, he went to prison because he was trying to mislead black people into not voting, into yeah. voting by text. Yeah. You yeah. can vote by text, you yeah. can do it one day, the day after the election. This wasn't some jokey yeah, meme. Was not, this it was, was not about memes, it was about election stealing interference. Votes. That's stealing right. Votes. That's right. That's right. Yeah, the, yes, exactly. Um, it reminds me of what our friend Brent Allpress said when we had him on the show most recently, that he thinks much of what's going on with Musk and Twitter is to influence the outcome of the 2024 election. So thank you, Jim, for putting that fine point on that. Uh, Hi-Fi, anything else before we go on to number two? I just, I, I, can't, I can't help think about what Volodymyr Demchenko said 
about people who tell lies and create a false reality, that they are putting other people in hell. Um, and, and that's what we're seeing here from, from Tucker and from Elon is they're creating a false reality and they're doing it specifically to radicalize people. I, I, I guess uh-huh. it's legal because no actions have been taken, um, but it just seems pretty messed up to me. It's interesting that Douglas Mackey was tweeting Russian troll accounts, just like Don Jr. and Mike Flynn were. Ricky Vaughn, quote unquote, Ricky Vaughn, the account he used, posted racist and anti-Semitic photos and memes and retweeted 10 GOP account. That was the fake Tennessee GOP account run from the St. Petersburg operation. What's interesting about that is that that was an account that was also retweeted by Don Jr., so maybe it's just a little too close to home for everybody. Look, look, Maggot 3X um, and the Internet Research Agency were were melded. They were they were organized together to create narratives, to create memes, to create hate against Hillary Clinton. And Douglas Mackey was one of the central figures of that group of people, which also included Microchip and Mike Jr. and a bunch of other people. So, you know, all, all of the noise and the bullshit that Tucker and all these people want to want to spread is nonsense. This was a joint Russian American operation to steal the election. That's it. It's not there's, there's no it's not a you know, a conspiracy theory. It's not we're not cherry picking things. This happened at scale online in 2016 and it helped to swing the election it's very yes. simple and we need to start pounding that message home because until we get some at least conscious justice right so that everyone understands what happened we're not going to figure any of the rest of it out thank we you have to figure out 2016 I I am gobsmacked that we are still having this conversation in 2023 as if we need to convince people. It is absolutely um, just astonishing. All right, gentlemen. Well, that just that just shows you how effective the Russia, Russia, Russia propaganda actually was. Yeah, that's another another Kira Giles brilliant uh, statement that we learned from him. He was absolutely right. Three words that dial down a military hit. And as Jim said, it was a joint operation and there's really no past tense. It is ongoing. All right. Um, So number two, Putin is funding the war in Ukraine by laundering gold through the UAE. This should surprise nobody. Uh, Martin Scheel, who always follows the money, pointed this out. And um, what he's doing Uh, is using gold, as the headline says, to fund his war machine as a way to evade sanctions. So what is the West going to do about that? Well, there's investigations now, and it's like, how long will that take? And and who dropped the ball on this? So can I tell you uh, what Mike Flynn's like biggest grift is? You can go to gold.generalflynn.com and find out. <laughs> Dude is trying and with all of his little might to destroy the U.S. dollar and to get everybody to buy gold. Now, why would that be? Oh, so coincidentally, <laughs> Daddy, Daddy's over there in Russia going, Vinny, I need, I need you to push the demand side for me a little bit. You know, like it's just <laughs> ridiculous it's just doing it in public like, yeah go go sorry i'm just turning now the coincidences are quite shocking um high fidelity we moving on to number three indeed we are okay great number three uh so uh i always appreciate you guys allowing me a little bit of space to talk about some of the work i do because i feel some of it is really relevant and today in byline supplement a story dropped a triumph for fanatics the erosion of the separation between church and state it's it's you know i wrote it i love this article uh it's an interview with ann nelson Uh, it opens with a great uh quote from ruth 
talking about what a triumph for fanatics everywhere to have Mike Johnson as House Speaker. But really what I do is I go back in time and I kind of start in 76 and I show how the erosion happened, where it occurred. And I use great quotes from Barry Goldwater who knew it was coming, knew, knew, knew what to expect. And um, yeah, it's a really whip smart, uh, whip smart commentary from Ann Nelson and uh, what we do about it. And she's in agreement that if the fourth estate as I wrote, still has a pulse, this guy will not be there long. We learn more and more about him every day. That is uh, very concerning to uh, the majority of the people in this country. Um, if anybody is not a Byline Supplement member, reach out to me. You guys know how to find me and I'll send you the article, the full article. Oh, can I just point out how ridiculous uh, some of the, the regular reporting on these people are yeah yeah so that was... we had we had donald trump right and donald trump was uh you know in his speech he he used yeah. literal fascist language yeah um and it was it was so blatant i mean yeah. he, he plagiarized hitler yeah and and this is what the new york times wrote about it it's funny, that was going to be one of my items, and then uh, I figured we'd end up discussing it in your, in Why It Matters. But yeah, that's really, this is very important. But you have to remember that the New York Times has been whitewashing fascism for more than 100 years, so uh, that's no surprise. Well, what's, what's really interesting is that after the uproar, uh, they, they've, they've walked it back, but they're still softballing it. Right. This is their new headline for that article. Same article, uh, same writer, For same picture. Forbes, um, which uh, which Forbes actually did the headline. Correct. If you want to find the Forbes headline, Forbes put vermin in the headline. And uh, although Forbes has, you know, Steve Forbes is a CNP member, so it can be very Vichy. Uh, they got this particular headline. Correct. Yeah, I think you need to uh, include Hitler in your headline. Do you want to be correct? Yeah. Donald well, Trump channels Hitler. Well, see, see what. Are you see, words? Look, I'm echoing Hitler. <laughs> Donald Trump declares opponents vermin. How look hard is you. it? Look at you. Look at Look at you. That was great, man. That was awesome. Oh my goodness. See, we're better. Like we're the New York Times. So York Times. I will. I will say here's. So here's what Forbes wrote. Trump compares political foes to vermin on Veterans Day, echoing Nazi propaganda. So that that's pretty damn good. That's pretty right, damn good. Okay, that's, that's pretty okay. damn good. That's pretty uh, damn good. Thank you, Sarah Dorn. Dorn. Okay. Thank you, Sarah yeah. Dorn, for having uh, either you know yeah. having your headline you writer or the editors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's front loaded, gentlemen. Let's move on to why it matters. Why high fidelity? First story this week. Oh, say can you OCCRP? Because the OCCRP oh, has that, been yeah. investigating money laundering through the island nation of Cyprus. Um, this is very, very important. You know, we've seen the Panama Papers. Uh, we know about London grad. But Cyprus is huge because it was Wilbur Ross. Donald Trump's uh, Secretary of Commerce, who oversaw an exceptionally large transaction for a Russian oligarch while he was on the board of directors of the Bank of Cyprus. All the clues are there. I'm not sure why people haven't connected them yet. Oh, high fidelity. It is so much bigger than old crusty ass Wilbur Ross. Uh, I have tweeted a million threads about how all roads lead to Cyprus. So much of what we battle is the transnational mob trying to cover human trafficking. All roads lead to Cyprus. Look at any of my threads. Type in Mind Geek Cyprus Cuda. You'll find them. 
all roads lead to Cyprus. I, I would also like to point out that, uh, you know, a person I like to talk about quite a bit on this program, the fellow who got me kicked off of Twitter, Sergey Grishin, uh, <laughs> while he was living in California and was doing business with Joseph Lonsdale of Silicon Valley and Dovi Francis of Israel, um, had a business in Cyprus known as Red Alliances. So Cyprus, yeah, all sorts of things lead to Cyprus. All roads lead to Cyprus. I'm serious. All right. Right on. Next story this week, we're going to talk about it's always been a class war. And this comes from brand new reporting from Axios, in which they talk about Project 2025 and how they're already lining up their troops for the invasion of government when Trump regains power in 2024. We've talked about it. It's getting out into corporate media. That's important. That's good. But when I say and have been saying for years now that it's always been a class war, um, they even took, hey, why it matters. Hundreds of people are spending tens of millions of dollars to install this army into the government these chaos actors, these disruptors, these destroyers, right? And something that's also, if you've been paying attention to any of our podcasts, um, it's being driven by artificial intelligence from the tech giant Oracle. And Oracle is very, very important to this story uh, because, well, there's donations on Larry Ellison's part. There's actions taken on Safra Katz's part. Um, and Ezra Cohen Watnick, who was in the Pentagon on January 6th, he plays a part in Oracle too. That's why it matters. My old friend, ECW, <laughs> who was uh, uh, installed uh, first in Jeff Sessions' office when he was Attorney General, so he could just root around doing whatever the hell he wanted in DOJ records before he went dark as VP of some shit at Oracle, and then suddenly popped up as number four in the Pentagon. This 34-year-old little chud, never done a thing in his life, is suddenly head of intelligence at the fucking Pentagon on January 6th. Him and Cash Patel, the little fucking asshat who's suing me for $10 million. Or trying, at least. Anyway, sorry. That's why it matters to me. <laughs> Bitches. Sorry. Final story this week. All up in my feels. Folks, I think it's time we talk about something that maybe not enough of us are aware of. Emotional manipulation. Mm. And the reason I talk about emotional manipulation is because this week we had two stories about two people that we talk about on this show a lot. The first one, well, he's a fucking problem. But, uh, you know, he needed a wellness check because his feels, right? This is media manipulation. It's cognitive warfare. They're trying to make us feel bad for Elon. And as for the next uh, news story that's come out in the last week. Oh, hi. Thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of garbage. Because, just look at this image. We, we talked about this on live, but I want to make sure people see it on our show. This image of this, you know, soft, glowing pink, Peter Thiel AI monstrosity is intentionally, he's got puppy dog eyes, for, for Lord's sake. This whole thing is emotional manipulation by billionaires using the media, and that's why it matters. Yeah, uh, Peter Thiel is the closest approximation to the Antichrist. I don't believe in any of that shit, but if I did, it would be Peter Thiel. The dude built an entire empire of companies to profit from suffering and death. He, he is not taking a break from democracy. He is currently funding the most anti-democratic, pure Russian propaganda outlet in the world, fucking rumble. 
which all it does is deliver brainwashing material to American minds. So fuck Peter Thiel and fuck that little bastard that wrote it. Sorry, wow. but okay, you're, maybe you're, maybe, you're I salty. Say, maybe I you're, should say that. Okay, you're salty. Are, are you feeling salty? I'm salty. That down. salty. I'm solving that down. And uh, I am uh, displeased with the uh, author uh, who wrote it. Uh, let me explain just briefly. Mr. Barton Gelman got his claim to fame by how? By publishing secret documents that he got from Edward Snowden that came from where? Mike Flynn's Defense Intelligence Agency servers, which, I don't know, Snowden should have had nothing to do with. Anyway, Snowden decided to go to Barton Gelman for some reason. Then last year, Barton Gelman writes a thing about Mike Flynn that says, oh, he's just crazy. He's just misunderstood, right? It's just a, a wacky general who's out there just being wacky, and nobody knows what it's about. Total bullshit. And then he comes out with this thing. So I, I don't know. I called him the Maggie Haberman of uh, Russian assets. So... So when I see those, when I see those reports, everybody must remember that victimhood is central to the fascist creep. So victimhood is actually part of the the fascist playbook. But I actually do feel sorry for them because they are super villains whose uh, legacies are not going to go down in history uh, well unless they take a cue from the homeland and consider truth and reconciliation and spearheading that and actually exposing all the ops that they're running on Americans and why they did it. And uh, that'd be a good place to start because Elon Musk getting booed got booed because he's marching us toward authoritarianism and people don't like that and they're on to him. And it must suck because about a decade ago, we weren't on to him and now we are. And why don't you lead the truth and reconciliation, Elon? I'll stand right up there next to you and, you know. I will deliver forgiveness to these men after they face accountability for their actions. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. Like, uh, That's what yeah. I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I, was, uh, I wanted to go to a baseball game with him after he gets out of prison. That um, might be a really, really, really long time. I love that, though. <laughs> we'll, we'll, be, you know, we'll, we'll wheel him in. There's a special entrance. <laughs> I, can act, I can get him into the... Uh, to the uh, you know super special place at the Dodgers. Oh, what it's called the, where, the where like dugout dugout club or something. Yeah. So okay, okay, I'm yeah. cutting this part. We're wandering. I'm cutting yeah. this. We're wandering. <laughs> um, until then, nobody's wandering. This is awesome. About? Don't cut any of it. Bleep no. what Jim said about Barton Gelman, but then keep it going. Don't 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 cut any of it. Bleep it out. Just like cover it up and then say, okay, I'm going to repeat that. Maybe That's I'll just I leave it all in. But what, what I want to say is, until such time as these men, until such time as these <laughs> men face accountability, <laughs> we are trapped in their hellscape. Jim Stewartson's hellscape. Oh, fuck. All right, friends. Hard time figuring out what to say this week. Um... It all seems very big and very intense, and it's just hard to kind of figure out what to focus on, right? Um, which is obviously part of the plan, to throw so much at us, um, to make it so crazy and intense uh, that we just don't have the ability to have any kind of coordinated intelligent response just briefly to review as a bit of a time capsule we've got the former president of the united states of america calling his opponents vermin we've got a seven mountains dominionist two heartbeats from the presidency who who's literal job his his faith tells him that he must not follow the constitution he must follow a mandate that says america should be turned into a theocracy 
Overseas, we have atrocities being committed against Jews, the likes of which we haven't seen since the Holocaust. We've got over 10,000 Palestinians to date dead, most unnecessarily, in my view. We're, we're getting hit hard over the head over and over and over again. And it's difficult to keep our, our way. For me, and this is just my personal experience, take it or leave it. I've also been very heartened recently by just how much people are starting to really get it, to start to step up, to start to defend their friends, to start to treat this like the conflict that it is, to be honest. Not to seek conflict, but to understand what it is so that you can take care of yourself, take care of your friends. If you know how this works, if you understand what's being done, then it's much easier to figure out, to discern, if you will, who means well, who doesn't, and what doesn't matter. And that's the biggest trick. What doesn't matter? Not what does, because it sure as hell seems like everything does these days, right? And again, that's what they want. So I've seen a lot of humanity. I've talked to people that I disagree with fundamentally about many, many, most things, but we see a, a humanity in each other, despite our differences. There's a respect, there is a kindness, there is a simple act of treating another person as a human. It's not as somebody that you have to be at war with. So there's, there's two projects in my view. One, find the people who are not looking for conflict, who don't want conflict and seek them out, protect them, because that's those are the people we need. On the other hand, when conflict is presented, when people are getting hurt, when you see your friends being attacked, when you see people lying, speak up, say something. We got one year before the election, assuming the election happens. We've got Mike Flynn and others telling us, you know, black swan events, who knows what could happen, right? Um, projecting, wishing for things to stop the government, society, to stop the world from functioning. Why? To save their own skin. And to collect more power for themselves. I've also been absolutely awestruck by the support and the friendship of everybody out there through a very, very, you know, challenging period for me. Uh, you know, uh, not gonna lie, being sued for a total of $60 million by the worst people on the planet, uh, getting attacked every day by dozens and dozens of people who have no job but to smear me and, you know, torment my friends, um, you know. It's not easy, 
but there's a lot of you and increasingly more who who are are, are stepping up and and helping out and I, I just couldn't be more grateful that's all i just wanted to thank you guys um for all your help um like i said it's been a dark time but i see i see the underlying strength i see we're still americans we're still a world that cares about people that does not want to be run by psychopathy rage so that's what I got this week thank you my friends um, again thank you so much for everything arrest Mike Flynn As we teased at the beginning, we are going to now be bringing you our interview with Alex Alvarova. As I noted, she has the Canaries in the Net podcast with her friend, Yosef Holy. They are both disinformation uh, reporters and activists, and it is the biggest uh, podcast in the Czech Republic. Um, she also has written multiple books on the subject of disinformation and psyops and propaganda. And she knows a lot about it because she grew up in Soviet rule, under Soviet rule. We're gonna introduce you to a very important word and let's bring in Alex now. Alex Alvarova, we are so grateful that you took time to be with us here today. We Thank have you. been talking, yeah, we're so glad you're here. It's like a another one who bears witness to what this world is really about. Um, yeah. We have been talking about the theme of being hunted uh, as journalists, as as um, some would call, you know, uh, this type of work dissidents, which I don't believe really applies here. We're pro democracy, independent, you know, journalists trying to bring truth during a time of mass deception. And when Zarina Zabriskie was on our show a few weeks ago, she talked about being hunted literally in Ukraine. Her photojournalist colleague who's working with her in Kherson um, wrote a book, Under the Wire, about being hunted uh, when he worked with Marie Colvin, who actually was murdered for her work and her truth-telling in Syria. And uh, Zarina was kind enough to say, and I think she meant it because she's been on this side of fighting the invisible war, that sometimes what we do is even harder because what we're fighting is, is invisible to most people. And yeah. yet it's so incredibly sinister where she said, there's no confusion to what they're fighting over there in Ukraine. It's very, very visible. Yeah. And can you talk about the historic precedent, you know, growing up uh, in under Soviet uh, rule and what is now the Czech Republic? Can you talk about what they, the ops they ran on journalists and dissidents and those who oppose the regime um, and there's a word for it. And can you share that with our friends? Yeah, it actually started in the early 70s in uh, in the Eastern Germany, uh, which was under the Soviet rule. And also it was applied, uh, it was also applied in the other Eastern European countries, but not to such an extent as is, is Eastern Germany. Uh, the Eastern Germany, Germany secret service called Stasi, Staatssicherheitsdienst, was extremely powerful and had an, had an extremely intelligent chief. Uh, uh, his name was Markus Wolf. And Markus Wolf, who uh, he was the, by the way, the inventor of the so-called Operation Romeo. So he uh, he grew up inside of his secret service gazillions of young, beautiful men who were then sent to Western Germany to lonely secretaries, <laughs> and, and it was a huge, a huge operation. But I don't want to. I don't want to go to any detail. So I will speak about his another invention. There is a horrible word. We I, I can barely uh, I can barely uh, pronounce. The word is zersetzung. Zersetzung means uh, like disassembly or dismantle someone. Uh, not. A thing like puzzle but dismantle a human being disassembly a human being uh, it was based on psychological operations but also on actions in the real life 
which should mess with your mental health, mess with your position and credibility inside of the society, cut off all your natural connections like family, job, trust in, the, on, in your workplace, sometimes even cut you out of money and deprive you of any social capital you ever had. And it, they employed gazillions people on one single dissident. And they were yeah. people who even died or took their life or uh, uh, some, uh, and the problem was, or the, 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 the purpose was, it was in the seventies after Kennedy went to Berlin and, and they started the, the Soviet Union and the, the Eastern states started to somehow need the Western economies to help them out. So it was extremely unpopular. It was, it was not very cool to kill journalists or to put them in jail because that was something like, hmm, yeah, you look bad, you know, it, it damages your image and there is a damage to economic relationship and diplomats get that bullied in the West. So you are killing journalists. Oh, you horrible, horrible people. So they invented a sophisticated method, how to get rid of the critics of the regime in an invisible way without any trial, without put them to jail, without killing them, torture them. And wow. they just employed secret agents who, for example, in the night, they went to your apartment and stopped the, <laughs> stopped the clock working that you, you didn't wake up in the morning and you, come, you, were, uh, you were late to your job or uh, it, to such a detail. So they worked on it and they based everything what they did on psychological profiling of your personality. So they were never the same two same like mirroring methods. Every single individual was targeted on based on his weaknesses. They they tried to find your vulnerabilities. What's your what's your weak spot and to hit the weak spot to to dismantle you to cause your trauma, to uh, deprive you of your social capital, and to make you an outsider no one ever will talk about uh, again. So, because everything, what was dangerous around these opinion makers and people who were powerful writers, journalists, dissident speakers, people who had a certain attraction or certain appeal to others who could speak the truth to the power, they were dangerous because of their social capital, of their, of their ability to connect to other people. And that right. was exactly what they, what, what the Zerzetzung was about, to wow. cut you out, to leave you alone, to cause mental harm, uh, or even suicide, just to haunt you to the deepest, parts of your soul and leave you there alone without any help. Wow. I think all of us here can relate to that um, feeling. And what's interesting about the tactics that they used is that this was pre-internet. So they used the same things that we are targeted by today and those who do this type of work are targeted by today, but they used, you know, different techniques because they weren't able to go into your social media profile and attack you that way. Yeah. So um, that kind of, to me, sounds like the groundwork that was laid for what, what it looks like today. Yeah, I think definitely because the, uh, the method remained the same. They are just new tools, new technologies who offer so much more to get to, under your skin we have now the, the the social influence of people who can speak the truth to the power could be more powerful and and way more way bigger than before so they now have to employ the tools how to get rid of you in your social circles through online harassment but also to combine it in the real life with actions yeah. in the real life how to deprive you of your family or to make you 
untrustworthy in your job, in your workplace. So this is everything doable. And it's not that it's cheap. Yeah. You, you, you need just through real, like two, three real people and the gazillions of social media account who keep beating you like, uh, and, and, and who keep hitting. And, and, and the, the, actually they are already known, well-known, even famous victims of these tactics deployed. Yeah. It's just right. Jessica Aro, the Finnish journalist who wrote the famous book, uh, Putin Trolls. Uh, they even, they were even not ashamed to call her because they knew she lost a father and they knew she loved him very much. So they sent her text messages signed as her father, like posing as if, as, if, uh, as her father and trying to get harm through fake text messages sent by her father, like, I'm watching you and, and, and like getting under her skin through this psych psychology, you know? Uh, there were Maria Res there was Maria Ressa, the, the journalist on Philippines, which endured an incredible online harassment they uh, they did everything possible from the online doxing you can imagine to her. Uh, they uh, she was speaking out uh, not only against Philippine uh, the Philippine dictator. She was also speaking out about their online methods. Uh, she was also involved in monitoring the Cambridge Analytica case. So there is so that might be that's also. It's fascinating the thing, because I you studied know? what Duterte did, and he had he spent a quarter million on uh, paying people to prop him up, and he didn't he wasn't ashamed about it. He yeah. literally he literally was like, "Yeah, I have an uh, you know influencer army," and uh, and then actually then also uh, made it impossible for um, media to be free in the way that that we know it to be yeah. so they really and of course of course philippine marketing companies offer these services to uh wage psychological war against anybody for hire um so that's also an yeah. issue because it's not illegal but, there yeah and by, by the way even the dictators and the bad guys need some kind of image and it's extremely uncool to hound uh, hound journalists and, and activists and leaving some blueprints or even <laughs> leaving some evidences against them. So this is a perfect method, how to get rid of someone who could be, who could represent a clear danger to your so position in the society and get rid of it without any consequences. Because how can you prove how can the victims prove something something helped without any any background? If you don't have any background in, in Intel and in OSINT and you are an experienced, most of the journalists have no idea how to protect themselves. We have it's no happening. It's it's happening. It's happening everywhere. And the closer to the, for example, in, in Europe, the closer to the Soviet or former Soviet Russian border, the more brutal it gets. Uh, in Russia, there were only, only during the Putin time, there were 21 journalists openly, brutally killed with, with no cover up just because they spoke. Some regimes don't even bother to cover it up today. Like in Russia, they openly killed journalists and there they were 21 people openly killed because what they said or wrote but other states where Russia have their proxies and they open like democracies, they need to find the same sneaky method like Marcus Wolf in the Eastern Germany at his time. So wow. that's why, and it still works. You just have the online tools and the big data and the sophistication method, the sophisticated method, how to make your psychological profile even easier because you have gazillions of data from Facebook and from your social media. You can guess the weak points. You can guess 
what's your pain what's what's the pain of your opponent and then hit the pain and make it worse high five one of the things you talk about you know is is this dissembling of journalists dissembling of uh people who would bring facts to the public and we know that okay this started way back in east germany of course nothing like that could ever happen now no uh, but except i would argue that we know just as recently as 2020 you know this is global business the, uh, russia is running a troll farm in in west africa who, uh, who, the, the for it's people to think that it's not occurring today it seems incredibly naive to me and what would me, you say to them Uh, hi fi one quick thing before you respond alex is i want to rephrase that without saying troll farm troll farm is not what this is these are weapons of war and i just feel like every time we say troll farm and i know i have the same issue it minimizes the harms it sounds like a kids game a little bit troll farm sounds it it has the nice cute meaning about some small trolls and something virtual who cannot harm you in real life so trolls game. green green trolls popping up green everywhere what am all online bullying isn't real yeah yeah <laughs> trolls when they get angry yeah, yeah. but do that. the problem is if the psychology of and, and your soul and your real life is involved then they can get you to the situation where you you can't see you 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 see no help for yourself anymore so you are helpless you you just your life just starts to crumble no one else, no one knows why your resilience sh shrinks uh, your family sees someone something is happening to you no one knows really why then you your uh, you suck at work because of mental health issues and then you have to, or they can arrange for other types of trouble like financial and then then the credibility and everything all these small tiny hits together aimed at your main weakness where you care at most can get you down and this it's is just, what we say draw farms it's just coordinated swarms of killers yeah of soul killers I love that. Soul I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just letting that sit there for a minute. Wow, coordinated yeah. swarms of soul killers. Yeah, I mean, we 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 see them out there all day long, right? I mean, let's yeah. not be around the bush here. Um, there's a, uh, I mean, this exactly what you're talking about. Is there Zetsum or something? Is that right? Yeah, that's the word. So Zetsum. Um, is uh, is something that you know I think we're seeing all over the place right now. Um, you know, at scale, even. I mean, if you think about, for me, what's happening to the the body politic, as it were. The if you kind of think of the mental health of a nation or the planet, you know, for that matter, you know, as a as a, a living, breathing thing, it's it's sick. It's sick because it's getting. Um, because this attitude, this idea that it's okay to tear people's minds apart, to yeah. implant yeah. your own ideas into people's minds, um, uh, it, it, it's just a, a whole, it's a different world than it used to be um, because this kind of thing, like Heidi was saying, can now be just, can be done for cheap, right? You don't need trained you know, East German police to to do this to someone. You just need a 19-year-old who, you know, wants some beer money and is willing to uh, run around the internet hurting people. Um, you know, you, and, you know what, Jim, what struck me when I saw when Chris Wiley was uh, um, talking in front of the, Amer I think it was American Senate or British Chamber of Deputies. I'm, I'm not sure anymore which which the legislation body was that. But he told that Cambridge Analytica was extremely interested in the data of people who are on the spectrum. And and he told he told them that they also extra filtrate or extra extracted data of sadists, of people they were interested of people who have sadistic who show sadistic 
markers. Why? Well, recruiting. It, it, yeah. Obviously, recruiting. And um, it, it's interesting you called them killers, soul killers. Um, I mean, some of the some of them, um, their goal is to get people to commit suicide. They call yeah. themselves suicide trolls, right? Yeah. Um, and and they they, you know, I I am personally aware and personally affected by groups of people whose, you know, basically stated goal is to get people to kill themselves. Yeah, um, I, I follow I follow you on social media, Jim, and I don't doubt these. They are after you, and they have a good reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and, and you know, as I've told people before, I, I'm more or less, you know, um, uh, impenetrable at this point just because I've, you know, seen so much of it. Um, so what's interesting to me about, about this at this point is it's a very, very clear indicator of what they don't want you to talk about, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And so... One, you know, sort of weird trick, weird trick for investigating kids yeah. is to say stuff and then see who gets mad about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, sadly, sadly, uh, yes. Fucking bear, um, but it's a pretty but, dangerous game. It's, yeah, a, it's, it's a dangerous fucking bear. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but but it's, it's, it's really interesting to me that, that this, you know, um, the East Germans had that. They picked it up basically from the KGB, didn't they? Maybe yeah, they actually, Markus Wolf was very much involved with the KGB. He was the most beloved head of of uh, secret services, and, and he worked hand in hand with the Soviets. Makes and he was sense. the most effective. He was, in, in many ways, most more effective than the Soviets themselves because he deployed these psychological methods, these yeah. Romeo, Romeo's agent and agents, uh, the... That's what that's kind of it was it was extremely effective. So in researching Ser Zetsung, um, they talk about using secret methods of abusive control. So the abuse is built into it, the pain and the protracted pain that we experience doing this work. And Jim, for example, we discussed this on RadPod. In my mind, he, he he throws truth out there like chum. There you go. Here here come here come here come the sharks. And uh, and it's interesting because we can see who swarms when he throws that truth out there. We can see who shows up. It is so obvious to us. It should not be invisible. And we know so much since this has been going on so long. And as you just explained, there's a history to this type of work. And we know the impact it had on the 2016 election. Let's not sugarcoat any of this shit, right? So I think it's time that Western governments step up and start offering resources and protections in something like a, a new deal like they did in America for theater uh, groups and agent, they had a federal theater agency in the New Deal, they had a federal writers program, they subsidized people. What we have here, as I was writing yesterday, is bigger than what we were enduring in the depression because as Jim and this team has documented, tens of millions of minds are being poisoned at a terrible scale and they have no uh, means to combat it. Many yeah. of them don't even know it's occurring and I watch it and it's subtle. And like you said, you know, I watch, I like look over my shoulder and I see a video that somebody is looking at and I'm like, oh, they are being targeted by the right wing ecosystem and they don't even fucking know it because they think it's just some cute yeah. comedian. No, yeah. that guy's yeah. job, he's a freaking Votnik and his job is to yeah. make you turn away from democracy and turn away from Ukraine and it's everywhere and yeah. we have we have no protection against it. We yeah. see it, uh, we're in the crosshairs of it, but I would love to figure out a way to get not only resources, but the rest of you know the country to see it the way that we do. Actually, I have one personal experience with that from, from my first personal experience with that online harassment came from the 2011 uh, when I wrote 
uh, at that time I lived in Vienna and uh, we had during the communist time two young boys, brothers, their their names were, their surname was Machine. And they participated in the so-called third uh, resistance. And while they both, they, they, they just wanted to escape uh, freely from the communist regime. And on their escape, they killed few people, like policemen and people who, who were after them and trying to catch them and kill them. There was a huge debate around their fate, if they are heroes or murderers. And the, this debate is still not finished until now. And when one of those brothers died, 2011, I wrote on my blog, uh, Mr. Machine is dead, may he rest in peace, our hero. You had no idea how many, and I was at that time, I, I, I had no idea that there is some kind of beginning information warfare in Czech Republic. After that, yeah. that blog got extremely popular. I got daily, th I got daily threatened that they will come kill my kids. They will kill me that I'm a bitch, that I'm ugly, that I should die, that I will rotten in the shallow grave. And it was horrible, horrible. And since that 2011 time, after I wrote this sentence in my blog, I'm a little bit resilient because I kind of realized they will, in, in safe states, they will never kill you. They will, because that's what they don't want to attract attention. So they don't want to harm you and leave any traces. They will just abuse you to get like like get you down and this is the and, and that was kind of yeah. my recipe how to stay resilient they yeah they won't never risk to openly harm me they just use this sneaky method to dismantle my psyche and to make me uncredible and and to strip me of my of my audience or <laughs> just well, to tell what... the people who are reading my books tell them I'm a horrible, manipulative bitch and uh, what, they should Well, it's, it's to poison your audience yeah. against you. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And one great line that I just extracted from Ruth ben Giat is that the harassers tell you what you're doing right. And that's really helped me because I, I, I was looking so forward to talking to you this morning, Alex. People who know me know not to send me the shit that's written about me or the people I love because it does have an impact, even though, like Jim, I have grown very thick skinned and very resilient, like you were describing. But when, when uh, I read from one of my stalkers comparing a newspaper I work for to e Epoch Times, not true, and then disparaging Ruth, who we just had on our news, newsroom meeting, it's like my, so I want to protect her. I want to scream. I want to ex expose and sue the shit out of these people. And then I'm just like, I got too much work to do. The harassers yeah. tell me what I'm doing right. And at this point, they're just talking amongst themselves. And if people don't know who the abusers are, uh, yeah. then, yeah. then I don't know what to say. Yeah. But I do want to ask you two quick things. One. Mm -hmm. What do you think with your experience and this being such a like a long game here are the types of people who would actually take this type of work? I understand if you're in the Russian military and that's your assignment, then then you got to, you know, uh, talk shit about Hillary Clinton all day. OK, well, that's your pathetic, dull life. But who what type of people take this work? I know in the Philippines, I tell you. People who are very poor take this work in the Philippines. Yeah. They don't like it. They do it. They get paid seven times more than the average worker. So I do know that. But what, what can you say? Uh, actually, we had few. It's not. It wasn't about journalists. It was about kids. They were after Russia incited the first disinformation wave about when they slaughtered the civilians in Syria. And then the mass of civilian refugees came to Europe they incited the campaign 
oh, the black wild Muslims are going to kill you all and they will rape your women and eat your food and everything. So people were extremely, and, and on Czech Republic, any in the history that there were never ever any foreigners they lived on our territory we have no experience with other folks than czechs except a few germans and few jewish people and that's it and suddenly there was the danger that virtue that the masses of wild muslims are gonna eat us all and some people threaten their the kids of the refugees small kids say like six years old uh, which came to our schools and threaten them like with those fascists they all belong to the gas chambers you know and that it, our media had suddenly enough and they spotted they went after one of those men who anonymously posted to to send and in, uh, tried to uh, inside that rhetoric that they, they the kids belong to the gas chambers and they found him they detected his identity they found him that they, they, they came with camera after him and asked him why did you do that why would you send six years old innocent child to the gas chamber and you know what he told them oh that was just a joke uh, i was just that was just a hyperbole it was i was just kidding i wasn't serious yeah it was just a joke huh. that that's always it isn't it oh it's just a joke i wasn't serious yeah. i yeah, didn't i was that. just kidding it's the it was walk back. i was yeah. exaggerating you know right. and then when they made a profile on that man turns out it's a very lonely very lonely person without any social capital mm. Wow. Wow. Low, you, loner you with just no social tried, bonds. You just who is trying to get who is just trying to get some tribe behind him. Well, so I just did a profile of Alex Jones for my American Monster series. Uh the the person who stalked Fred Gutenberg, who lost his daughter in the Parkland shootings to a violent massacre, the person who stalked him with hundreds of vile emails you just described that man he's now in federal prison he will not be listen able to listen to info wars when he gets out he's going to be monitored but you just described him and the people who stalked the parents of uh you know who lost children in in these violent shootings were part of a community built by alex jones info wars yeah and and when you, you see the need people to they belong. Arrest, Wow. You yeah. need to belong. And suddenly someone comes and offers you the only one and the first chance of your life to belong. What would you do? Just say, oh, no, I'm, I'm, thank you. I want to stay alone. Yeah, it's, a, it's love bombing, right? They, you, you need both the carrot and the stick yeah. in order to yeah. manipulate people, yeah. right? You need love that. bombing. By the way, that's the first step of any cult what the Stephen Hassan describes in his books. Yeah, That's how it starts yeah. exactly. to get you yeah. in the cult, love bombing. We need you, you such an, you have, what the Wes Clark said, you have such a powerful spirit inside yeah. of you. Yeah. We, yeah. we can yeah. see the light, you, you yes. know, you, you, you just- You are exceptional. Up. How did we the, you, the how did your family not see that potential you have? Yeah, what well, you said to me about-, about You would um, kill for that feeling if you are yeah. your entire life lonely and, and no one yeah. appreciates who so you are. You, you, you mentioned people on the spectrum um, which is a really, um, it's something that I've followed here very closely. Um, if you if you go to the worst parts of the internet, 4chan, 8chan, these kind of places, they call themselves, themselves weaponized autists. Um, they, they revel in the fact that they're all on the spectrum um, and or not all, but a lot of them and it becomes kind of a it became kind of a status symbol <laughs> of sorts okay. okay um which is really really um odd of course but m in my experience and i'm i'm neurodiverse 
um, uh, people who are on the spectrum who are neurodiverse um, sometimes are, are very, very smart, um, but they, they also have this sort of big brain syndrome where they will create conspiracies, they will create, you know, connections between things. And that serves people really well when they're like programming or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's also something that can be weaponized um, yeah, to, yeah. to sort of pull people. I, into I exactly that. know what you talk about. It's the possibility that if you think differently, suddenly you you need to work with the reality as if everything is possible, yeah. because th there are so many options. What could happen? So many. Yeah. 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 So I, I too, uh, supposedly, I've never been formally diagnosed, but supposedly I fall on the spectrum. And uh, so I looked into, you know, what, what does that mean? And one of the things I actually found uh, when I was reading about all of this was in 2022, a paper came out uh, that describes vulnerability to ideologically motivated violence. Um, now, I'm not saying that, oh, gee, if you're autistic, you're going to be a terrorist. No, that's not at all what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that if you are autistic, if you fall somewhere on the spectrum, you should simply be aware that there may be a propensity for this inside of you. And when someone tries to nudge you towards violence, when someone tries to nudge you towards hating someone else, when someone tries to engage in stochastic terrorism and impose an in-group, out-group viewpoint upon you, you must simply be like, I don't know about all that. You have to, you have to guard yourself because it is, yeah. uh, you know, it's an attack surface. Yeah. And th this is actually something no one in mainstream media ever dares to write about this. And uh, I'm actually, it, it doesn't wonder me. So I, I think it's sensitive, highly sensitive stuff. It, re it really it is. Should, there should be some, someone who who dares to investigate this weaponizing yeah. of human soul. It, it is. It, so... Um, uh, uh, sort of being on the spectrum is one AS, on the ASD spectrum is one vulnerability. Um, that I'm curious what what was your experience with um, ha, has been your experience with religion being weaponized um, because that's uh, that is a huge vector. Um, uh, you know, and what I'm seeing right now is people's faith, their their religious beliefs are used as an entry point um, in much the same, you know, in a similar way that people with on the ASD spectrum, you know, they have different kind of brains, right? Yeah. When you have faith, when you have religion, you have, there is a, a, a sort of magical thinking that you have, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, about a higher being. And there's, yeah. and I'm not, yeah. I'm not yeah. saying yeah. that's yeah. wrong, yeah. but you it's know, used as a way in. And I'm curious what your experience is like that. I have, I have a painful experience with that because I myself, I'm Catholic or I consider myself Catholic. And during my last six or seven years, I went on a trajectory when I totally lost faith in the, not lost faith in the God, but I, I lost faith in the church as an institution because I see so many members of the church in Czech Republic, in America, like cardinals, like Vigano or, or the, how is that, Berkey, and, and in Czech Republic, uh, the arts, the cardinal, the main representant uh, of the Catholic church back then, Cardinal Duca, they all are water bearers for Putin. Yes. All of them. Yeah, yeah, I know. I like to call it. How could yeah. you how could you trust to 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 something which which was once there to you when they yeah. say when they support the muscle the mass law terror, the liar, the war criminal? How it's, could you? It is so yeah. big the, and the, so I wanted to just mention Vigano, uh, because he's uh he's a especially dangerous character. He's Mike Flynn's personal priest. 
<laughs> and Jim was just writing about it this morning. Um, I'm going to I'm going to interrupt for one second because we're over our next interview in Ukraine is ready and we were okay. supposed to start three minutes ago. So I'm sorry, guys. I have to open that room. But Alex can and and I'll send you guys the Zoom link again. Alex, can you just give us your best summary sentence to our viewers? on why they got to wake up to the insidious information warfare, which is everywhere. Uh, the problem is that most of the people have an experience with the war or warfare as with something where people get killed and where there is a lot yes. of shooting and, and houses are being destroyed. And the fact that people can die and even give up their security, give up their democracy and give up their territory freely to the enemy. Yes. This is a concept which is completely unknown. And we should do our best to find the best words, the best <clears throat> metaphors and the best reach because what we need inside of the information space and what we lack is the reach we are being getting we we are silenced and mute yes. getting mute we need wake to reach up, wake up, to Alice. say this out loud Please. people there is an absolutely new type of warfare it has never been it's new you have yeah. no experience with it but yeah. it could make you attack your neighbor it yeah. could make you give up upon your mental health it could make you give up upon democracy and it could make your interest in in helping each other totally void. Alex like. Alvarova, thank you so very much. Please come back so we can continue to enlighten people. But I feel like we just made a major leap forward with the knowledge that you just shared. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.